Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make the kite block that is in the quilt behind me. And this has been made using Paisley Rose layer cake and a Bella Solid Junior layer cake. And this one, the colour is porcelain. So to make the quilt behind me, you need a pack of each. I haven't used all of the squares because you can make it as big as you want or as small as you want. So what we need to do is we need to make blocks that look like this. So these kite blocks and these are made using two half square triangles and two half square rectangles. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So you take a layer cake square so let me use this nice pale pink one and you take a solid square and you place one on top of the other and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give them a little press because I find that if you press them together it does tend to hold them in place when you're drawing your lines and cutting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut those so I've got them facing each other and then I am going to cut those in half. So I will have a 5 by 10 inch rectangle. So one is going to be my half square rectangle like this and the other is going to be my half square triangles. So you're going to need to mix those up and you will have twice as many tops as you will bottoms because we're going to get two tops out of this. So I'm going to do the half square triangle first. So I'm now going to take this and I'm going to cut it in half again. And I'm going to draw a line diagonally. And the same on the other one. And then I'm going to sew down a quarter of an inch on either side and cut those. So that is going to form our half square triangles. So I've got some here that I've already done. And then these go together, you join these together like this, and that forms the top part of your kite. But I'm going to sew those in a minute. Now with the half square rectangles, what you have to remember is because they're rectangles, some of your lines will go from the bottom right to the top left, and some will go from bottom left to top right because we need the angles of these to be opposite. So these two bottom bits are opposite and because they're rectangles we can't just put them together like we can our squares. So that's really important that you remember when you're sorting through and you're deciding which colours you want to go with which that you do some lines going one way and some lines going the other way. So I'm just going to draw this one from the bottom left to the top right. I'm going to draw my line and then I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch either side of that line exactly as you would do for a half square triangle. But, and this is the important bit, don't sew it like this until you've moved it. So you need to move it to go corner to corner like this. Otherwise, I'll show you what you end up with. If you just go for it like you would on the half square triangle, you end up with that effect. And that's not what we want. So you can see I've already made that mistake. So. What we need to do is to make sure that we take our top off and that we turn it and we go corner to corner before we do our sewing. So I'm just going to line that up 
and then I'm going to pop some pins in because it will move as you're sewing it. So I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in and then I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew either side of that line. Then we're going to cut up the line. We're going to give those a press and then we're going to cut up the line of our half square rectangle as well. And then we give those a press. And then with your half square triangles, you can just cut off these little corners here, the little ears. And I don't cut them off the rectangles because I need to make sure that the bottom points line up. So I leave those until I've got all of my pieces done and I start to join them together. So you would work through your layer cake till you'd got a lovely assortment of colours and you'd got some half square triangles and you've got your half square rectangles, not forgetting that you need them to go the opposite way. And then I would just sort through them and start to join up what I had got. So, for example, these two would be going the opposite way and they would create a block. So at this point, I would cut that little bit off there because I can see that I can line those two up and I would join those together with a quarter of an inch seam. And then when I want to make my top, I'm just looking for a different colour. Here it is. So when I want to make my top piece of the kite, I would join those two together like this. And when I've got those two joined together and those two joined together, I would press the seams going the opposite way so that when I came to join the top to the bottom, I would have a nice crisp point in the centre. Now you do lose some of your side points, but when it's all joined together like that, it gives the illusion of kite. So it's it's not possible not to not to lose those in the seam, but you will still have your top and bottom points. Then you square this when all this is joined together to create this shape. You then square it up so you have a block which measures eight and a half by 13 and a half. And once you've done that and you've got all your lovely kites made, you put them together in rows. And it's up to you how big you want to make it. So as many kites as you want, you might just want to do four and make it into a big cushion. So we're now gonna go over to the quilt behind me and we're just gonna have a look at that. So I've put this together using 20 kites. And this measures approximately 56 by 66, because then what I did was I put a two and a half inch border of plain Bella Solid porcelain round the edge of my blocks. And then with the rest of the layer cake, I cut them in half, so they're five by 10, and joined them to make a bigger border. So you can make it as big or as small as you want. So I've used grunge for my binding, and this is called Horizon Blue. And I've used the blue because I've backed the quilt with a turquoise fleece. So I've then quilted just using a wavy line in between the, the kites because I felt it looked a bit like a kite tail, this lovely wiggly wavy line. So I think this would make a great picnic blanket because it's got kites and it's got fleece on the back. So as always, have fun, make it your own, and I look forward to seeing you here in the sewing studio the next time.